Welcome everyone. I am Sophronia Scott, Director of the Alma College MFA in Creative Writing, and this is Faculty Friday. This is your chance to learn something from our amazing faculty that you get to work with one-on-one -on -one as a student in our low residency program. Today I have with us Jim Daniels, who is a poet, fiction, and nonfiction writer. He's also been the writer of plays and screenplays. He is um, also a, a teacher or has been a teacher at Carnegie Mellon and is amazing. And so many students love him. Thank you for being with us today. You're with us today, Jim. Well, th thank you, Sophronia. Happy to be here. Now, I think we're discussing poetry today. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so I'll just get started if that's all right. Yeah. Uh, the, so <clears throat> One of the, and like like a lot of writers, or, or maybe maybe not like a lot of writers, but uh, I personally have learned a lot of things the hard way in terms of uh, some of the mistakes I made early on. And w one of them is not an uncommon issue, and that's being too abstract in general in poetry, mm -hmm. and thinking that uh, it's some people kind of define it that way in terms of, oh, poetry is about your feelings. Now, that's not incorrect, but what, what you're trying to do in poetry is to get, uh, well, what I'm trying to do is, is to get emotional transference hmm. from reader to writer. And so if, if I say I'm depressed today, that doesn't make you or anybody else depressed. So it's not, talking about how you feel. And if somebody's keeping a journal or a diary, sometimes that's the kind of thing you might write, mm -hmm. um, th that kind of general thing. And you can unpack it because you have your brain uh, with you to decode those abstractions. But the big thing about uh, any kind of writing really is you want, or the, you want to make a, an impact on your reader. That's And that's what an MFA program can really help you do is, I mean, if you're writing for yourself, you probably don't uh, maybe need it, necessarily need a writing program. But the assumption in a writing program is you wanna connect to the world and writing is a great way to, to make those kind of connections. And one of the great rewards as a writer is when somebody reads something you wrote and said, oh yeah, I, uh, I can relate to that. I felt that too. And I felt some of what the, uh, the speaker in the poem felt. So this involves a certain kind of uh, form and there are different variations on it. I, I know we don't have a lot of time, but I'll just go through them quickly. So sometimes uh, Writing about yourself is one of the hardest, trickiest things because getting in a kind of distance between who you are and what other people might need to know about you can be more difficult. So this is a poem by a poet, I'll just excerpt it. It's a poem by a poet named Ruth Whitman. It's simply called a questionnaire. And she took these questions that you would, when you fill out, when, you, when you're applying for a writing program or anything else, a uh, job, you tend to have to answer questions like this. So the first one, it says, describe your early education. And I'll just read her excerpt. At six, standing on a low stone wall beside my grandfather, I was taller than he, wearing my white beret, hair cut short with leather leggings to my knee. I put my hand on his shoulder possessively and sang him as a lullaby. Ah, Malak Bayant, an angel weeps an angel weeps. So that's one to, that's like seven lines. And it's not saying how you would normally fill that out, which would be, I went to Phillips Elementary School, uh, and then I went to you know, Fitzgerald High School or, or whatever. And the reader doesn't know, unless they went to that school or lived in the vicinity, they wouldn't know anything about that. So Whitman's taking the idea of education figuratively I mean, one of the cliches of this is, well, I went to the school of hard knocks, right? Uh, <laughs> in other words, we, we have a great deal of our education that takes place outside the classroom, and that's what she focuses in on. But here, 
uh, just think about how packed this is. She's six, the age she's standing on a low stone wall beside her grandfather. And the surprise, I am, I was taller than he, the whole perspective that she's dealt with at age of six uh, has been reversed. Wearing a white beret, haircut short, leather leggings to my knee, we can see uh, her. And the idea of a child being able to put a hand on the shoulder of a grandparent, again, continues the reversal of, of the roles and singing and sang him his lullaby. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, it foreshadows a lot of the things that happen with parents and grandparents in terms of uh, at some, for, for years I took care of you and now uh, when I get older, a lot of times we, we have to take care of them. Other questions that she uses is, what is your permanent address, male or female? Are you married? Describe a crucial event in your life. List your honors and awards and give a brief statement of your plans. All questions we could answer pretty straightforwardly, but uh, you know, she takes, I'll just read you a quick one, honors and awards. Three children, one a yellow tea rose, two a wine dark peony, three, a young fox, art's desire. Again, an image in every single line that might give you some sense for how the children are honors and awards uh, for her. And some of the other examples of these kind of self-portrait poems, because a lot of classes begin with having students introduce themselves and they tend to introduce themselves often in more general abstract ways. Now, this is a, a resume poem by a poet named Judy Benson. And in, in the, it, and she has the same idea, but her questions are different. And I would mention that three of her questions are sex, politics, and religion. I mean, there's others, but those are, to use another cliche, those are the three things you're not supposed to talk about in polite company. And poetry is not for polite company necessarily. In other words, sometimes when we're polite, we're holding back. And one place you don't wanna hold back is in your own poems because you're gonna have a distance between you and, the, and your reader. Uh, a poet whose name I'm not remembering at the moment talked about a poem being like a hand reaching out to the world, hoping that someone else will grab that hand. And again, that's an image of that, the physical connection, which we long for, and which is one of the reasons a lot of us write. And, uh, you know, you think of, well, why do you want to get published as a writer? It's that, it's that connection, really, that you're a part of this bigger world. Most of us, when we write, we're in rooms like the room I'm in right now, where we sit alone, and it's not always the most pleasant thing in the world, uh, but we're writing out of who we are right. in, a, in a way that is hoping for a connection. I mean, if, if any of you listening to this have a writer who you admire, you might be able to do some research and reach that writer, and particularly poets, because we tend not to have the largest audiences in the world to begin with, but... I tell you, when I get a note from a reader, even if it's some high school kid who is forced to read one of my poems and, and uh, ask me a couple of questions, uh, it, it makes my day. I mean, just that simple act of you know, realizing that, <clears throat> hey, I, I connected with somebody uh, in however brief ways. Uh, and uh, another interesting example is from a Michigan poet, uh, Jim Harrison. He, he's better known as a fiction writer, but and he did screenplays too. But he did a poem called Sketch for a Job Application Blank that takes on a sort of painterly aspect to it uh, in terms of it being a self-portrait. So, and, and Harrison was blind in one eye. So this first stanza just sets that up because it's one of the first things you would notice about him if you uh, met him. 
My left eye is blind and jogs like a milky sparrow in its socket. My nose is large and never flares in anger. The front teeth buck, bucked, but not in lechery. I sucked my thumb until the age of 12. Oh, my youth was happy and I was never lonely, though my friends called me pig eye and the teachers thought me loony. So, you know, this is, he's applying for a job and that's not the kind of thing you would normally write on a job application, but he's describing himself. And sometimes we forget as writers that our readers can't see us. And sometimes that can be a significant aspect. People are reacting to you based on who you are. And you, know, you meet somebody for the first time. All these little things are clicking consciously or subconsciously in your head. And uh, so other, there's this powerful poem by uh, Crystal Williams called In Search of Aunt Jemima. Uh, Crystal's now the president of uh, Rhode Island School De of Design and she's still a very fine poet. And this is about, uh, it's what I would call a negative self portrait. Crystal um, is a, a black woman. And at times, uh, you know, she talks about uh, weight issues in here. She says, I've been 250 pounds, 100 pounds, and I've lived and loved every pound in between. I'm still restricted by Nell Carter images of me. Nell Carter was a TV actress, uh, was popular there for a while. So uh, she's telling, she ends up saying what she is not. In other words, you, we can make assumptions about somebody based on stereotypes, racism, external appearance. Uh, and I'll just read you one stanza of this. I am not your three babies by 15, green dragon lady press on nails whose rambunctious ass is stuffed in a too tight lycra with a lollipop hanging out of the side of my mouth and a piece of hair caught in a rubber band stuck to the top of my head. So sometimes uh, you can see that, and, and the poem really uh, has a lot of kind of anger and strength to it in terms of what she is not and kind of daring people to uh, to put her into this uh, stereotype. And, and so the sense of, so if you describe, it's kind of, if you describe all of what you're not, then you, you create a negative self portrait in that it's uh, what's left is who you are after you talk about all these things right. uh, you're not. And so, there's a uh, Origins by Jeffrey McDaniel is, is, a, is a kind of list poem based on the connection to where he grew up. Uh, you know, there's a, a Things You Didn't Put on Your Resume by Joyce Sutton. It's another idea for an exercise that could turn into a poem. And one of the things about these section poems where you're kind of filling out a questionnaire is that you can end up, uh, particularly for be newer writers, you can compare sections of your own writing. Because another very difficult thing for newer writers is to see your own work with any kind of perspective or ob objectivity. So when you're comparing separate sections that you wrote, sometimes it can help you realize where you're being too abstract and vague and maybe make, you, and because some of these are forms that can make them uh, make you a little less conscious of the fact that you're writing a poem cap with a capital P. Because that really messed up, messed me up when I was starting to write. I started writing in high school and uh, I, just a short version of this, but I, I didn't know I was writing poems until one of my professors told me, or teachers, and then it psyched me out because I thought I had to sound a certain way because I was writing poetry. And uh, so I wrote this horrible poem. It's so horrible, I still remember some of the first lines. It's kind of a, and you don't learn anything about 
the I in these lines, except that he's feeling sorry for himself. Yeah, it goes, <laughs> I who am about to die, I who weep but cannot cry. I'm losing my mind, you say. Perhaps I think it went astray. <laughs> and, uh, you know, that a poem like that isn't going anywhere. And so that's a poem where the hand isn't reaching out. The poem's saying, woe is me. And uh, that isn't enough to get a reader invested in your work. So taking the time and uh, in, in visual art, the idea of the self-portrait is more sort of ensconced as a certain type of art that a painting that many artists over centuries have done. In poetry, obviously the self-portrait poem exists, but it doesn't have that same sort of uh, historical importance, I think, or, or awareness that it has in the visual arts. But if you think like a visual artist when you're describing yourself, that can go a long way to opening the door so that you can reach your hand out there and hope somebody's gonna grab it once in a while. Absolutely. Thank you, Jim. And I, I also like how um, what you said helps us to think about wielding imagery with intention, right? Especially in, in terms of uh, describing ourselves. So that's a wonderful lesson to take away with us today. I am Sophronia Scott. He's Jim Daniels. We are with the Alma College MFA in Creative Writing, and this has been Faculty Friday. If you would like to know more about our low residency graduate program, you can find us at alma.edu slash MFA. Thank you for being with us.